Stop saying prego all the time. Now, prego isn't the only way to say you're welcome in Italian. In fact, there are nine equally popular terms and phrases that locals use to say you're welcome in Italian that will expand your vocabulary and have you sounding more natural. Also, did you know that prego actually means five completely different things? Stick around because I'll teach you all five of them. And to continue your learning and to help you practice, make sure you download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson, which I've linked to in the description below this video. Pronti? Are you ready? Cominciamo! Let's begin! Okay, the first one, prego. This is obviously the top choice. For example, you might say, Grazie per il tuo aiuto. Prego. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Prego in Italian can be used in both formal and informal situations. This means that you might hear native speakers use it in a variety of interactions with friends, family members, elderly people, doctors, basically in any type of exchange, regardless of the degree of formality required for the situation. However, you'll be surprised to know that this little word is super versatile and can be used in a number of contexts. So let's take a look. Prego also translates to please and is a polite word that you can use when you hold the door open for someone. For example, you might say Prego, dopo di lei. Please, after you. When you invite someone to sit down, for instance Prego, si sieda. Please, have a seat. Notice here how prego is used in formal contexts and therefore you must use the lei form that is the formal you to address someone. To learn more about the formal and informal, watch this video here. With the same meaning, but in a different and much more informal context, you might hear the expression ti prego, ti prego which translates to please or I implore you, but also I'm begging you. For example, Papa, posso usare la tua macchina? Ti prego. Dad, can I use your car? Please. Another situation where you might hear prego is from a waiter or a waitress or a salesperson when walking into a bar or a restaurant or a shop. If they greet you with Buongiorno, prego. They're asking you, how may I help you? Or in the case of a bar or a restaurant, are you ready to order? So don't look so shocked. They're not telling you you're welcome. They're actually starting a conversation with you. The next meaning of prego we're going to look at is when it means go ahead, which is used as an invitation to speak or give permission to do something after being asked a request. For example, you might say, Posso chiederle una cosa? Certo, prego. May I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. In this context, the usage of prego is quite formal. Prego is also the first person singular of the verb pregare, meaning to pray. Io prego. Or just prego. Therefore, both mean I pray. And finally, this little but powerful word can be used as a sort of question that you ask when you want the other person to repeat what they've said. Prego. As in, pardon, sorry, what was that? Sorry, I didn't get that. So if your Italian friend is telling you about their day in fast Italian, you might need to stop them at some point and say, huh, prego? If you've visited Italy before, you've most likely heard the word prego used a lot and it is quite popular, but there are so many other colorful variations that express a certain nuance when you want to say you're welcome. So let's take a look at the first one, shall we? Di niente, di nulla. For example, you might say, Grazie per la cena. Di nulla. Thank you for dinner. Ah, it was nothing. Now, these phrases literally mean of nothing, that niente and nulla are synonyms that translate to nothing, and they are interchangeable. They're frequently used and quite neutral. That is, like prego, but you can use them in both formal and informal contexts. You can use them to express your willingness to help or to do something by saying that there was no inconvenience caused. The next one is Ci mancherebbe. Ci mancherebbe altro. For example, you might say Grazie. Sei un tesoro. Ci mancherebbe altro. 
thank you, you're a sweetheart. Don't even mention it. This highly idiomatic expression would translate literally as there would miss something else, which sounds a bit odd if you directly translate it into English. But this is a popular, albeit less common than prego and di nulla o di niente, way that Italians use to say you're welcome. This comes from the verb mancare, to miss, but its actual meaning has nothing to do with that. You could translate it as don't even mention it, or you're very welcome, or it was a pleasure. Ci mancherebbe or ci mancherebbe altro is very emphatic and it fits in both formal and informal contexts. The word altro literally means another or different and it doesn't add anything special to the phrase itself, so both versions are accepted. The next phrase is... Ma ti pare? For example, you might say... Grazie mille, ti devo un favore. Ma ti pare? Thank you so much, I owe you one. Don't mention it, no worries. This phrase to say you're welcome in Italian is also very idiomatic, meaning it can't be translated literally. It is actually quite hard to find a proper translation in English for this one. How come? Because sometimes Italians use typical expressions whose meaning is clear only to native speakers because they're part of the common usage, but to foreigners, they don't make any sense at all. Ma ti pare is one of them. In English, it would translate to something like, but does it seem to you? Because it derives from the verb parere, to seem. Unlike with the previous phrases that we've seen, this expression is mainly used in informal contexts, that is, with friends, peers, and close acquaintances. This phrase is used in situations where a person expresses extreme gratitude, and another one responds to it with a high level of enthusiasm for being able to be of assistance or help. Coming in at number five, we have... Figurati. Si figuri. For example, you might say... Grazie del regalo. Figurati. Thanks for the present. My pleasure. Any time. Don't mention it. These next two expressions used in Italian to say you're welcome come from the verb... Figurarsi meaning to imagine or to figure, but once again, they're used figuratively, no pun intended. The informal version, figurati, is a much friendlier way to say prego and conveys the idea of my pleasure, happy to help, any time. For instance, if you give your Italian friend a present, you can reply to their grazie with a figurati. On the other hand, the formal version, si figuri, is also friendly, but at the same time very polite. For example, La ringrazio per il suo tempo. Si figuri. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. My pleasure. Like prego, figurati can have different meanings too, depending on the situation where it's used. Take a look at the following sentences. Pensi che lo chiamerò? Figurati. You think I'm going to call him? No way. Non viaggia mai nel suo paese. Figurati all'estero. She never travels in her own country, let alone abroad. Another expression Italians use to say you're welcome is... Ma scherzi. For example, you might say... Grazie per avermi aiutato. Ma scherzi. Thanks for helping me. Don't mention it. Of course. The phrase... Ma scherzi, uttered in a tone between a question and an exclamation, is very similar to ma ti pare, which means it's used mostly in informal contexts. It's a very enthusiastic and emphatic way to express your pleasure, to help, or to do something for someone, such as a friend. The literal translation in English would be, but are you joking? Although it's used to mean of course, or don't mention it. Next we have... Nessun problema. For example, you might say... Grazie per il consiglio. Nessun problema. Thank you for the advice. No problem. This next one is another common phrase Italians use to say you're welcome. Unlike the previous expressions we've seen so far, the meaning of nessun problema can be literally translated to no problem. It conveys the idea that giving help or assistance to someone didn't cause you any inconvenience. This phrase is actually the shortened form of Non c'è nessun problema. Meaning, there's no problem. 
attenzione, be careful. Now, if you're a beginner in Italian, you would probably translate the English no problem with no problema in Italian, which is a very common mistake. However, the word no in Italian is not used in these kinds of expressions, but only as a reply to a question. Check out my guide to see the most deadly mistakes beginners of Italians make in this video here. The next expression is Piacere mio. È stato un piacere. For example, you might say Grazie per essere venuti. È stato un piacere. Thank you all for coming. It was a pleasure. Another way to say you're welcome in Italian is with Piacere mio. My pleasure. Or its variation È stato un piacere. It was a pleasure. Which conveys the idea of you enjoying assisting or doing something for someone. As in, I don't or I didn't mind helping. In fact, I am or I was happy to help. Remember that è stato un piacere refers to the past, so it's only really appropriate to use it when the act of helping has already taken place. These expressions are both quite formal, so you won't hear them as often in informal contexts, such as among friends. Next we have... Assolutamente. For example, you might say... Grazie per avermi invitato. Assolutamente. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Now this word is also used to say you're welcome in Italian. It is quite informal and translates to the English word absolutely, which can be used as an adverb in other kinds of sentences too. For example, Non è assolutamente vero. This is absolutely not true. Next we have Non c'è di che. For example, you might say Grazie per l'informazione. Non c'è di che. Thank you for the information. Any time. Don't mention it. This phrase is a more colourful way to say you're welcome in Italian. Non c'è di che is very idiomatic and therefore impossible to translate directly into English because it literally means something like there isn't of what. I mean, what does that even mean? It is quite informal and very polite. So now that you know all the ways to say you're welcome in Italian, make sure you keep practicing and download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson, which I've linked to in the description below this video. To make sure you never miss a future lesson, hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications. If you enjoyed this lesson, then you'll love Intrepid Italian, my series of online self-paced video courses that break down everything you need to know about Italian using my unique 80-20 method. Just visit intrepiditalian.com for more details. Enjoyed this lesson? Make sure you watch this video here to learn the top 100 most commonly used Italian words and this video here to cheat your way to fluency in Italian. This is a real game changer. A presto. Ciao.